Hey guys, and welcome back to another video of mine. If you're new, hi, my name is Taylor. And today's video is about being a double major, or the truth about being a double major. So, like I said, if you're new, my name is Taylor, and if you also don't know, I am a senior at William Peace University, and I am a double major. I'm a writing and psychology double major. So, pretty much what that kind of entails is what you think it might entail, kind of like having all of these different classes combined to complete both degrees around the same time. Lots of people in college decide to do that. I have a couple friends who are double majors or double minors or whatever thing you do. So I'm here to answer any question you have about being a double major, if that's the path that you want to do. Um, if you see me looking down, I have a list here, which Okay. Yeah, I have a list here about what I'm going to actually talk about today, so if you see me looking down, sorry, but let's get into the video. Alright, so the first thing is it depends on what you think you can handle. So I, um, like I said before, I'm a writing and psychology double major. Um, writing comes pretty easily to me. I've always been really good at English, so that's why I choose writing. Um, and later on, I decided to pick up psychology as a backup plan um, for the career choice that I want to do in writing as it's not very popular, very sustainable. So I was like, well, let's just choose a different major in that quest. So pretty much writing and psychology are two completely different subjects. And Sometimes writing can be a little bit easier than psychology, but I can manage them both. So that's honestly what you would have to do is see what you can manage and see how you can manage both majors. So say if you want to be like a biology major and a chemistry major. Those are pretty two hard subjects. Um, at least that's what my friends say. So because of that, you have to remember how much the course load each major will take, how long it will take you to complete, and do you honestly think you can do that load for four years or more or less if you're in a different country? But yeah, that's something that you'll just have to think about, and if you think you can handle it, I say take on the double major. All right, um, like I said, uh, my second... Um, not really tip, I guess, thing to look out for is you have to plan out each of your years. Um, in the United States, most colleges, um, especially universities, they last for four years on a four-year plan. And so if you think that you can get your major, once you've declared it, of course, which will go into my next thing, but once you think you can declare a major and have that kind of worked out, can you complete it in four years or how many years your college or school takes. If you can, maybe it's the right major for you. If you can't, maybe you have to think about, well, should I be taking this major? Or think about, maybe I should take some more years on school to complete your major because everybody should be able to complete whatever major or whatever concentration that they want to do, no matter how many years it takes. But realistically, just think about the pathway of how long you think the majors will take and how long you think you can handle that course load and stuff like that. All right. Um, and my third thing, I'm, this is only like a four thing video, but my fourth thing or third, sorry, <laughs> third thing, I can't think straight today. Third thing, uh, is make sure you declare early. So, um, like I said, I live in the United States. So around this time period, uh, you are supposed to really declare your major around the sophomore year of college. And that's when, because your freshman year, you're just taking out courses to kind of like feel out what concentration or what major you'd like to do, what interests you. That's pretty much all your freshman year. Sophomore year, you get into that, but at the same time, you're starting to get to, all right, well, what kind of what interests me? What do I want to do in the in the real world? What do I want to make my career? So sophomore year, like I think the end of your sophomore year, like your second semester is when you're supposed to really declare your major, um, at least at in the United States. I don't know about everywhere else, but yeah. So if you make sure you declare early, because if you declare early, like around that time, you should be able to finish what your two tracks are by the end of of your senior year or whatever like I said whatever year you're uh, finished whatever school or country you're in so because I've had friends who have um decided around like I think uh their freshman year sophomore year junior years they're fine they're like okay well 
Um, I am sticking to, let's say, English. So they've always stuck to English, and then all of a sudden they're like, I want to throw in a theater major, like, in there, or as a minor, possibly, and see what happens with that is English and theater kind of have nothing to do with each other. And that means that in order to finish, even though you're almost done with your English degree, you're still going to have to stay another year or two to finish your theater degree because you haven't taken enough courses to supply that. So if you are ever planning to go that route, which I hope you don't because it's just a huge headache, but if you are, the best thing to do is pick two majors that kind of coincide with each other so that way you don't have to stay an extra year or two to finish the requirements for it. All right, um, last thing, and we're going to wrap up this video pretty short. Um, advisors and academic catalogs are key. So pretty much, if you don't know what an advisor is, an advisor is someone who helps you figure out what courses you need to take and what type of, like, yeah, pretty much they help you decide what courses you need to take in order to graduate on time. Um... Um, I've said this repeatedly, but in the United States, it's about four years to graduate, at least at most standard um, universities. And so um, your advisor helps you figure out, okay, you can take these classes your freshman year, these classes your sophomore year, these classes your junior year, and you can finish up these classes your senior year. So that way you can move all along. An academic catalog is the catalog that you come in when you uh, come into school. So um, I came into school. I uh, started college 2016. So 2016 to 2017, that's my academic catalog, and I have to f abide by those courses and those kind of, like, yeah, like those courses and that type of rules and regiments and stuff um, for that year all throughout when I graduate. So that's the course catalog or academic catalog, whatever you want to call it, that I have to abide by. Um, same with when you enter college. If you're entering college, say you're going to be a freshman this year, your academic catalog will be 2019-2020 school year, and that's the catalog you're going to go through as you enter, as you go through college. So um, these academic catalogs and these advisors help you tremendously, especially when you have a double major. Um, as a double major, I actually have two advisors, one for my writing and one for my psychology, and they kind of help me plan out, okay, well, you can complete this now, or if you have something that you're following back to the other major, you can complete that as well, and kind of just figuring out to make sure we don't have any problems or snags. Um, both of those advisors, um, or say you're even doing a triple major, or maybe just a double major and a minor, I have some friends doing that. Um, those advisors kind of plan together to make sure that you're going to graduate when you're supposed to and that you're they're on track. So make sure to listen to your advisors. Make sure to listen to your look at your course catalog each year to determine, okay, how many courses do I need to get 20 to get 18 credit hours and such and such like that. I know I've heard some horror stories from some advisors that just don't help people. Sometimes you have to help yourself. Um, this is based on my experience. I've had wonderful advisors. I love them both and they both helped me um, tremendously. But like I said, um, if they're not going like that, I'd probably go to the registrar's office. Um, the registrar's office helps you uh, plan like what what the courses are that you need to take and they can kind of get you a little bit of guidance if your advisors are helping you. But best bet is to stick with your advisors. Um, that's all I had for you guys today. I just wanted to keep it short and sweet. Um, if you guys want to catch up with me at all, my socials, my Instagram and my Twitter are both in the bio below. If you have any other questions that I didn't actually get to or any tips that I actually didn't hit on in this video, please comment down below and I will definitely be responding. Um, and anyway, if you guys are actually starting school or have started school, congrats to you and I hope you guys have an awesome school year. And I should have another video up sometime next week. Um, I'm about to move into college myself about next Friday, so I'm, I know my scheduling is sucks right now. Um, it kind of sucked to begin with, but I'm trying to plan out a proper schedule to actually do this. Um, so yeah, like I said, I don't know what next week's video is going to be, um, but I know the video after that, I will definitely be doing a dorm tour this year. I know I keep saying that, but I'm actually going to do it, so... But yeah, that's all I have for you today. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I love you guys and peace out. Bye.